We've got some important injury news to get to, but really quickly, I want to share the updated subscriber numbers with you guys because we picked up 107 subscribers last week before the Jets game. This week, we're at 41. It's Wednesday, halfway through the week. We've got to pump those numbers up right there. So hit the sub button down below. Welcome on in to Falcons Today by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here breaking down the latest injury news and report going into week 14 against the Bucs. A crucial game for Atlanta. They can really distance themselves from Tampa Bay and the rest of the NFC South. And a win puts them at 7-6. and six. And according to the playoff computer, gives them a 80-ish percent chance of making the playoffs. So let's look at the injury report from the first day of practice leading into Buccaneers week. Drew Dahlman. Caleb McGarry, David Onyemata, and Nate Landman all did not practice today. Now, Jeff Okuda is in concussion protocol, so he sort of practiced, but it's not the same when you're in concussion protocol. But he was on the field, which I think is a positive sign, whether it's him returning this week or playing this week or hopefully not missing too much time beyond this week. Mac Hollins, who we had not seen for about a month at this point with an ankle injury, he returned to practice. That's encouraging. And Jeff Okuda, he was also available for practice today. But A.J. Terrell, I would say, is the biggest name of these five starters who was not a full participant in practice. Like I said, in concussion protocol. Fingers crossed he will be available on Sunday because you can get by without having A.J. Terrell against Tim Boyle and the Jets. When you're going up against Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, that might be a game where you need all hands on deck. Now, Terrell this year has had one of his best seasons yet. He's only allowing a completion percentage of 58.5, 374 yards, and three touchdowns. Now, you might look at those numbers and go, and that's the best season yet. I'm going to say this. A.J. Terrell, in my eyes, is a really good corner. If you make him out to be an elite corner that's top three in the NFL, you might be disappointed a little bit. But in my opinion, A.J. Terrell is an above-average corner that can show moments of like top five-ishness or have a top five game-worthy performance. But at the end of the day, Terrell is looking like he is hopefully going to be back sooner rather than later, and I think he's having a really good season. Now, as for his long-term in terms of whether or not he'll be playing for the Falcons or someone else as his contract is expiring at the end of this season, if we look at the top 10 highest-paid corners... Just to, take, just, just, just to take a quick sidetrack here, I don't think A.J. Terrell is going to ask to get Jair Alexander, Denzel Ward, or Jalen Ramsey money. I don't think he's looking to reset the cornerback position and get north of $20 million, but he definitely doesn't want to get $14 to $15 million. He probably wants to be around Marlon Humphrey, Marshawn Lattimore, Xavier Howard. I think he wants to be in that range of... 17 to 19 million dollars a season which is a pretty penny for a guy that I think is an above average really good corner but not someone I think is worthy of resetting the cornerback market so let me know should the Falcons bring back AJ Terrell is he someone you think is a long-term piece of the secondary and is deserving of a big fat contract this offseason or are you thinking hey it's not worth all the money let's go a different direction and you know save a little bit of money Give me your thoughts down below in the comment section. Now let's talk about the offensive line because of the five starters who did not practice fully today. Two of them were on the offensive line. Your starting center, Drew Dahlman, and your starting right tackle, Caleb McGarry. Now both players are having a really good season. Drew Dahlman has been a top three center, in my opinion. PFF has him ranked second out of 39 qualifying centers. He's been phenomenal in run blocking. And Caleb McGarry had a slow-ish start to the year, but he has picked up his play in the second half. He's a top 25 tackle in football right now. Only three penalties, and that was sort of his like uh, biggest Achilles heel to start his career. That number has gone dramatically down. But they're definitely going to need Drew Dahlman at the very least this Sunday because Vita Vea is on the other side of the line of scrimmage. He's having a near career year. Leads Tampa Bay with five and a half sacks. So this is not a game where you want to be shorthanded against Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. And then also not have your starting center against the best nose tackle, arguably, in football in Vita Vea. So it's unfortunate and it's unlucky for Atlanta, but... It's the NFL. Everyone deals with injuries. Hopefully, these guys can return sooner rather than later. First, a quick shout-out to our sponsor today, Prize Picks. 
Thanks to Prize Picks, I've had an absolute blast watching some of the stinker matchups because football is still football. I'm not going to miss a game, but you can stay locked in on some of these bad ish primetime games thanks to Prize Picks. Now, if you don't know how Prize Picks works, let me explain. It's really simple. All you do is pick more or less on player staff projections. You pick between two to six players. The more players you select, the potential increased winnings waiting for you. So I'm picking the more on all four of these bad boys here. Bryce Young's passing yards, which I know might not scream more, but I feel like there's always that bump after the head coach gets fired. That's coming for Bryce Young. I'm going to need the more on Matthew Stafford's passing yards. Pretty low for a guy that's won three games in a row. Drake London, I'll take the more on his receiving yards. If it's below 50, I'm going to get in bed with the more. And then Javante Williams, I'll take the more on his rushing yards at 57 and a half. So go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS so you can ride with me, you can fade me, but whatever you want to do, go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. All that information is in the comments and description of today's video. And when you when you use code CLNS, you're going to get a deposit match up to $100. That's prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Recapping more injury news from week 14. Nate Landman, the starting linebacker for Atlanta, he was also on the injury report with a knee injury. Now, Arthur Smith said yesterday on, no, I guess on Monday actually, that both Landman and Caleb McGarry suffered knee injuries that they do not believe are long term. So if Landman does miss some time, hopefully it is just one week against Tampa because this defense, they need Nate Landman. Like he might not be the most valuable player on this defense. The casuals might not know him. But those of you that are watching every single Sunday know this defense tends to go as Nate Landman goes. Now, if Landman is unavailable, Andre Smith is slated to take over and start next to Caden Ellis, who's having a really good season himself. I know the sacks might not be there as much as they were last year in New Orleans when he had seven and a half, but I think Caden Ellis has played really good defense all season long. And Andre Smith, who filled in down the stretch for Landman, I think has done an okay job to anything above average you could ask for out of your third string middle linebacker. And finally, let's talk about David Onyemata and this defensive line, which just really cannot afford to miss another starter, right? It's already tough without Grady Jarrett. David Onyemata missed a week due to an ankle injury, and then we saw the Cardinals win their second game of the season. So I think it's pretty crucial to get Onyemata back. This season, he's got five tackles for loss, three and a half sacks. He's right there with Nate Landman, where he might not be the flashy A.J. Terrell or Jesse Bates, but... Quietly, he is the guy in the bottom of the ship shoveling coal into the furnace to keep this boat moving. Now, if you don't have David Onyemata, well, Rashad White is definitely going to have a much better outing. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers starting running back has 643 yards and five touchdowns on the year. He's already a little happy not having to go up against Grady Jarrett for a second time, but no Onyemata out there, that's going to make life a lot easier for this Bucs offensive line that I don't think is below average. I don't think he's above average. I think they are right smack dab in the middle. And White as a back is probably right there in the middle in terms of ranking all 32 starting running backs. And before we get on out of here, I do want to check out the remaining schedule for Atlanta because I think we're at that stage now where we're not quite ready to start going into the playoff machine to go, we need this team to win this game and this team to lose that game. But we can just kind of dip our toe, right? Just kind of look and go, Got the Bucs coming up at home. Go to the Panthers. Got the Colts. Colts are, I don't know what to make of the Colts. The Colts might be good, Patrick. The Colts keep winning. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs, but at least you got them at home compared to on the road. Although I think they've been better on the road than at home this season. Um, and then you round up the year with two road games at Chicago, which in late December is not a great place to play football. And then at New Orleans to end the season. Now, the remaining strength of schedule for the three competing teams in the division, it's kind of a cakewalk for everyone. Like, it's close in terms of the record for all three clubs, and it's even almost closer in terms of remaining strength, uh, strength of schedule. Atlanta is 31st, New Orleans is 30th, and Tampa Bay is 24th. So will the Falcons make the playoffs? This is my last question for you guys before I let you on out of here. Get down to the comment section and shoot your shot. Now, before we do leave, I asked a question on Monday. I like asking questions if you haven't noticed by now. And it was, if you could turn injuries off 
for one Atlanta athlete. I opened up to all Atlanta athletes. Who would it be? And I found some really interesting comments down below. So Steve Martin, maybe the actor, I'm not quite sure. Instead, Steve Bartkowski, Atlanta Falcons quarterback. And obviously, this was before my time. But I did do some uh, digging and did some research on him. And Bartkowski only played two full seasons, Patrick. Those two seasons, Pro Bowl quarterback. Man, if he had played more full seasons, could have been a whole different story. Um, we've got A. McKinn saying Dominique Wilkins. I didn't really get this one. He did not miss a whole lot of time. Uh, we have Todd Gurley just as like a Georgia athlete, right? Had a great time at Athens. And yeah, Todd, Gur Todd Gurley's fall off was something out of left field. I mean, going from NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year, all he did was score touchdowns to out of the league like three years later. I think the league would have been a lot better if Todd Gurley was in it. Uh, tolls with South ALZ, Jamal Anderson, obviously a little bit before my time, but Anderson missed 27 games in his final three seasons. By the way, I checked out Tolls with uh, SOALZ. Really cool do-it-yourself YouTube channel, so go check him out if you haven't already. Uh, Rob Wilk said William Andrews, again, a little bit before my time, but missed a full season and only played six years. This was back in like the mid to late 70s, but the guy was churning out like touchdown after touchdown and yards after yards. So some really good players right there that I wish we could have without the injury. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to this edition of Falcons today. We'll sign off and we'll see you all later.